When you think about mammals during the Mesozoic or the time of the dinosaurs, you're probably thinking of little mouse-like things scurrying under the feet of dinosaurs in the dark, be it burrows or only coming out at night. But some fossils have shown that they weren't necessarily all little mouse-like things. Some of them were at least moderately sized, including things like Adalatherium, which would have been about the size of a badger. But there's also fossils that are a bit older of things like Repenomammus, which was this similarly sized thing to Adalatherium, but was shown to have had juvenile Cetacosaurus in its stomach. Cetacosaurus was a relatively small dinosaur, and one of the early Ceratopsians despite not having a frill. It still had the beak and some of the jaw structures we do expect from the group though. So the mammals were seemingly fairly important pressures on the early stages of dinosaurs' lives. Essentially, as they were growing up, hey, mammals might eat them too, not just other dinosaur predators. But now there's a new, really, really incredible fossil that suggests it wasn't just when they were young. And that's because it's also over a Penomammus, but it's hunting an almost fully grown Cetacosaurus. So an animal almost three times as large. Now there's a few lines of evidence that do suggest it was probably some sort of predation attempt. And the first part of it is how well intertwined these two fossils are. For example, you have the hand of Repenomammus inside the jaw of the Cetacosaurus, the teeth of Repenomammus in the arm of the Cetacosaurus, and then the rear limb of Repenomammus holding onto the rear limb of the Cetacosaurus. So they're very closely linked together. It's not like someone just took two fossils and kind of stuck them together and went, hey, look, they were found together. This is something much more intensive and intentional for what these animals were doing as far as their behavior. As for what seems like the potential prey item being too large for Repenomammus, look at modern day mammals. You have things like the least weasel, which can hunt hares five times its size, or even more dramatically, the wolverine, which, well sure, larger than both of these animals, hunts moose, the largest deer in the world. So there's not some sort of hard limitation on what these animals are able to do. Instead, actually what we find is Repenomammus and Cetacosaurus fall well within the confines of what we would expect for a terrestrial predator and its potential prey size. Additionally, when you're considering Rapinomammus actually attacking something much larger, we do see this in some places, mostly where there's a lot of predators around. And Rapinomammus isn't a super large predator, but if it were able to kill a Cetacosaurus, get access to a large part of the meats in that animal, eat it very quickly, even potentially while the animal's still alive, and then leave and run and hide, that would be good for it because when we correct for the entire ecosystem population, we find that there should be a lot of relatively small, medium, and large theropods around, most of which would be able to bully Rapinomammus off of a kill, or alternatively, eat Rapinomammus and its kill. So we really need to begin be interacting with all of these ideas all at once. These are complex ecosystems, or at least they were. We need to genuinely consider that. And the final reason that the researchers think it was active predation has to do with the fact that there's no bite marks on the Cetacosaurus. There's no real evidence that it was already dead and this was just a scavenging event. So unless the Cetacosaurus died just before this Repenomammus got there, it was probably an active predation attempt. And I'm sure some people are going to mention, but its hand was in the mouth of the Cetacosaurus. Why wouldn't it just bite it? And there's been a lot of research on this and how prey responds to being hunted. And a lot of times the prey animal just kind of ends up in shock and unable to fight back. And that may have been what was happening here, which is really unfortunate for that Cetacosaurus. But of course, the Repenomammus also died, otherwise we wouldn't have this fossil. And so that condition that really led to these fossils being preserved is also one of the interesting parts about this story. That's because it's very likely that this predation attempt was set to a background of volcanic eruption. The fossils come from the Yixian Formation, which is already well known for some really, really great fossils preserving feathers and things, and those are all in volcanic ash. But this instead is volcanic mud that probably came from something called a lahar. A lahar occurs when a volcano with a lot of snow or ice on the top of it erupts, and all of that snow and ice melts very, very quickly, causing a massive amount of water to just come cascading down the mountain, carrying with it a lot of mud and rocks. This can be absolutely devastating. There's entire villages that have been wiped out because of lahars even miles from the volcano that was erupting. There's also examples of the United States Geological Survey making maps of where different volcanoes such as Mount Rainier are going to deposit lahars if they erupt. And you can see there's towns in there. They have specific warning systems because lahars are dangerous. 
We also know that the Yixian Formation was deposited at high altitude, meaning those volcanoes would have been even higher and likely would have had a good amount of snow and potentially even glaciers on them. So it's not entirely shocking that this kind of deposit actually does exist here. It's just really unfortunate for these animals that they ended up getting caught in one of these lahars and buried. But it's really nice for us because it's one of the best fossils we have of showing direct mammal predation in the Mesozoic. When compared to the dinosaurs that were around, we really don't have a lot of strong evidence for mammals actually trying to feed on dinosaurs. For example, we have Tyrannosaurus rex teeth in the tails of Hadrosaurus, which then also escaped that predation attempt, and the tooth stayed in the bone, and then the bone grew around that tooth. Really good evidence that this Hadrosaur was bitten by a Tyrannosaurus rex when it was alive. Direct evidence of predation. We don't get that for mammals very often. So it's really nice to actually see this fossil, and it's unfortunate again for these animals that they died this way, but otherwise we probably would have still had a little bit of that inkling that Oh yeah, mammals just kind of hung around the feet of dinosaurs and didn't really do much. Whereas we need to really start thinking about these animals as being living, breathing parts of their environment. I mean, not living and breathing anymore, but that's what they were. They were engaged in that environment the same way the dinosaurs were. And we really need to consider how that entire ecosystem would have been working together.